This week, I have the privilege of interviewing national speaker, Michael Miller. Now, Michael Miller comes from the higher ed world, working full-time as a res life director, multicultural director, even assistant dean of students. And then he transitioned into speaking, going on speaking circuits and speaking to students at other universities about communication skills, team building skills, self-awareness skills. He has a lot of great input in this in this video, if, especially if you're interested in ever speaking as a, as a career or you just wanna get inspiration about your self-improvement. You'll get that from this interview. I'll put the link to Michael's website in the description of this video for you to learn more. And this is what I wanna hear from you at the end of this video. What's one takeaway that you heard from Michael that really stuck with you? Leave it in the comments, let me know. Michael, thank you so much for coming on the show, talking to our students. Can you quickly get, just give us a rundown of your professional journey, where you are today? Yeah, well, you know, I studied um, English Lit in college, and I was a secondary ed um, minor, but um, I got caught up in being really involved in college, and this thing called student affairs called me, you know, so student life was my world. So I spent... Um, about 20 years working in various functions in higher education, including residential life, student activities, which is my love, um, and student activities included working with Greek organizations, um, student government, um, CAB, the program board, um, you know, and uh, multicultural affairs and new student orientation. So I loved all of that. Um, but the passion part of that was leadership development, was working with students in taking their um, involvement experience is and um, framing that in a way that would have application for them well beyond their time in college and because there's so much learning that happens in and out of the classroom right so how do we fuse what you get in class and get to practice it in this lab of campus living you know and uh, and uh, I, I love that so the student leadership piece was the passion and that led me to do a lot of presenting work and a lot of training work all around the country due to involvement in professional organizations and little by little I was tapped by schools I was hired so at one point I took a leap away from student affairs and from higher education officially and went out on my own as both a speaker and a consultant in higher ed so that's the the the, the 20 year story in about 25 seconds. <laughs> what in your mind, what's the definition of success? If you're talking to a, a college student, what, what's your definition of success? Well, this is, you know, this is a thing most of us that do this kind of work spend a lot of time thinking about, right? And, and, and it's serious, but I do want to say this, it's to me, and this is going to sound strange, Dustin, wanting to get up every day and do the thing that you do. Mm -hmm. And it, I get emotional because it's like living a life of privilege, but, but, but not the bad privilege, not white privilege, not mm -hmm. living a life of privilege that you earn through your experience and your education, right? So whatever level of education you have or whatever level of experiences you have, that you get to choose your life. Mm -hmm. And that's heavy. And that comes with loads of responsibility, right? Because we all sleep alone and, 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 and it's true. Like we left to live in our own skin. Even when you, you're a spouse, you have a partner, you, you live alone and your life is your life. And it's the gift we get to do the things that matter most to us. And it's not my place or your parents' place or anybody's place to tell you what the purpose of your life is. And we, we need to spend our lives. That's why philosophy is important. You have to have a, a, a reason for being, the reason what drives you. And I don't care if it's fishing or it's being a, a, a physical therapist or a doctor, it, it, you know, what, what drives you is what drives you. And, and you know, I was, I was doing a session recently for a college on what's your mission, you know, your personal mission. And I, I always um, want to put my money where my mouth is. And I know what they're going to ask me. These, because I love students because they're not afraid. They're like, well, what's your mission, right? What's your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And when it boils it down to it, and it so, sounds so lame at first, but it's to be helpful. Mm. to be somebody that helps. And, and I, I, I noticed that that's what drives me in my friendships and my personal relationships with my family. Like, you know, how can I help? How mm -hmm. can I help? And I look at my work as how can I help? And when I do help, and I don't know that I always do, but when I do, that's success to me. And, and you know what that brings you? That brings you joy. It brings you up contacts and colleagues all around the country. And it brings me money, Yeah. you know? And it brings me money, you know? And so- we all have to do it our own way, you know, 
and 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 when your when your passion fuses with your opportunity, how could that not be successful? And the best part is when you don't like it anymore, or you it's not you don't feel successful. You can change it. Yeah. You can change what you want. You can change your mission. You can change it. But if you're always thinking about it, it's hard to go the wrong way. You know. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my my thing about success. You know, I I, I'm you not going to define about, anyone's success. Define your. I love what you say even about reflecting on that piece. That's, that's fantastic. So say you're sitting down in front of that one student, that driven student, that top, you know, 2% of driven student has all the internships, has all the grind and grit behind them. What's one piece of tactical advice that you would give that student saying, okay, you're top of your class. Fantastic. But here's a new, new mountain to climb. Well, it, it goes to something we've talked about you and I, and, and, and it's, I would ask you the single most important question. I think any adult and I mean college student as adults can ask themselves. And that's, what do you want out of your time in your life? What do you want? And by the way, don't poo poo that. It's, that's not an easy question if you really think about it. And if you wanna get real, you can't say success, you're already successful. If you're a college student at the top of your class, you have achieved success. So what you have to define success. If you say happy, define happy. If you say money, how much, how much? Because successful to me and successful to you financially may be two different things, right? And then when you answer that question, and by the way, Dustin, you know this from your work, the what do you want question is really a question of vision. It's the, but your personal vision, like if you, if, if you said, what's your vision, it's the same as saying, what do you want out of your life? It's what you don't have that you're working to get um, or, or that you're going to apply yourself to an, a, a desired future state, but it's not a goal. The, the goals come later. And that's what we do wrong. We start setting goals. Wait, 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 wait. What's the end product? The vision is not a goal. A vision is what do you want? The goals are the tactics that take us there. So, you know, what do you want? And I, you know, I always use this example. And if I were with this student, I would say when, you know, cause sometimes even the most confident students feel a little self-conscious about this whole thing. And maybe they don't know. And they're afraid to, and I don't know yet. I haven't thought about it. I need to think about it. Right. I always use Jennifer Aniston as an example. And I know she's dated, but with the friends reunion, maybe she's coming back into Vogue. She's lovely. She's pretty. Right. But she's the best actress in the whole world. Right. Is she the, you know, Jennifer Aniston went for it. And she had a lot of the makings for it. And yes, she's talented, right? Mm -hmm. Why, who's better than you? You know, again, I'm not belittling her at all. She's, but you know, how do they all make it? They make it because they go for it. And then they have the luck of work and and the fortunate coming together. And luck does play a role sometimes in things, but it's more putting yourself out there. It's more having the guts to say, I'm good enough to do this. Even though you sweat, even though your voice trembles, even though you're nervous and you're not sure, you put yourself in the positions to move you to the places that you want to be in. And, you know, that's what a way to live. What that's a, to me, that's successful living, you know, challenging yourself, using all of your endowments all the things that you possess to get you to the place that you want to be so you know i love that, I love that. Back, and i'm you know i'm not dissing jennifer aniston by that yeah, no. saying, you know really <laughs> she's the that. only one that should achieve that kind of stardom I, I don't think so i think she put herself out there and she had connections her father was in the, you know she yeah. used what she had we all need to use what we've got you I know and 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 to get the thing that we want but we have to know the thing that we want that's I, I, I tell students all the time you know what's the worst that's going to happen you're, you're told no <laughs> If you're told yes constantly, in my opinion, that's a bad thing because yeah. you're not pushing it enough. Like get told no. That's that's how you know you're pushing it. So I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Michael, so I want to give you five million dollars right now. Last question. Last question for you. Five million dollars for a Super Bowl ad. 30 seconds in the Super Bowl. You can do whatever you want in that 30 seconds. Whatever message you want whatsoever. It's going to reach so many people. What's in your 30 second Super Bowl ad? Well, I have to come out about this. I'm not like a huge football fan. So, and I get the ads, but I'm not like one of these people. I'm not. And and, and I know that's not popular. It's popular to watch the ads and like the ads and see the ads. But I'm thinking of two things that I would do. One would be silence. Just 30 seconds of black screen with maybe one word that says, take a minute. Because... What goes on during the Super Bowl, I think everybody should take a big deep breath, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but 
because I, I think one of the things, and, I, and I'm a victim of this too, there's a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of noise. So much noise sometimes and so much distraction. By the way, I love technology, but the distraction we carry around, it, we, we can't hear ourselves sometimes. And that, that, so, so that would be one thought, not very popular, I'm sure, among you students. So don't be mad at me for this. Um, the second one is, if I had the, the, the resources and mm -hmm. I, I would want, I, I'm really into this notion of personal accountability. Mm -hmm. And if I had all the money in the world, I would have a foundation for personal responsibility. And, and I would do some really high end, you know, I would hire you, Dustin, to do the, the marketing and branding of this to, um, you know, um, do a sexy ad on how, you know, it, 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 personal accountability is a good thing. Like that would be my, promote my foundation. But, but, um, but be, be, because I think that that's, people think that it's hard to take responsibility for things. It's better. It's better when you take responsibility, when you own what you've done. And I'll, I'll come out about that to you. I screwed up. We, Dustin and I made an appointment to me and I read my own calendar incorrectly, right? So I could lie and say, oh, something came up. Or, no, I read my calendar wrong and I gave you bad dates. Like just to own it. I feel so much better. It's so much easier and cleaner. And you, Dustin, were so nice about it. That's generally what happens when we, you know, as long as it's not crime ridden, People are pretty cool. So take responsibility for the things you do. That's when we learn things. But so I would do some really jazzed up ad for uh, making making a personal accountability attractive. I know it's boring. I'm, I'm, I'm not the best at this, you know, but I would accept the $5 million. I'm admitting that. <laughs> Absolutely. The five million. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, my pleasure. Thanks, Dustin.